Right here? Huh? Right here? Yeah, right here. I come out that door and this was swinging around. Yeah. Went from takeoff. Were you in the? Were you already in the ball on takeoff? No, no, no. You just no, hung no. out in the waist. Yeah, I yeah. hung up in the radio room. I was out in the radio room until we got out over the channel. Uh, no, no, until we got into formation when we were formed up as a group and going to join the wing. Then you had to be in position, and that was that usually took pretty close to an hour. Huh. So you had to climb, you know, like this, and there's spiral. hundreds of them out there climbing in a spiral, to getting up to altitude of 20 to 25,000 feet, and that took pretty close to an hour. Yeah. But you would you would sit in the rain? No, no. <laughs> I dumb? didn't smoke then. Oh yeah. No. Uh, I really can't remember what the heck I did. <laughs> <laughs> It's, I say we had we waited till we got but I probably got in that ball but I definitely wasn't in it on takeoff I'll tell you that <laughs> <laughs> Germans happy. They were just uh, 
swarming all over us. And it was a continuous fight from there, from the channel on in to Germany. We just got to the German and uh, Belgian border. And by that time, we had lost most of our group. And they were, we were in damaged very heavily. And, and our plane had fell out of the little formation that was left. And I was hoping that I would be able to get out of my ball turret because it has to be cranked out. Fortunately, I had a very conscientious and good weight gunner. He was an armor, and he helped crank me out. And seeing the size that I was, which isn't very big, but it was big for the ball turret, I couldn't wear my harness or my chest pack. So... The waist cutter and I are trying to get that tied up while the radio operator and the tail gunner got out the waist door. Well, at that time, the waist cutter is standing there and I'm standing in front of him and we're working on my uh, leg strap and I could see I was being straight up the tail and it knocked me that way and it kind of knocked my weight cutter this way. At the same time, we were being attacked from the front, and that attack knocked both wings off the fuselage. And uh, I'm laying there on the floor, and this fuselage is just going around like a feather. And I think I could maybe run right this down. And I think, no, you better get out. <laughs> so... The problem was is when them wings come off, there was so much debris and junk going around the fuselage of that plane, it was hard to figure where you should go. But I crawled on my hands and knees to the door of the airplane, and I got out, and I said, uh-oh, oh, because the tail swung around, hit me in the back of the head, and knocked me unconscious. Well... When I come to, I pulled that ripcord and I swung down and my hands went up like this because I had never got my straps on my legs fastened. So I almost mounted it, that parachute and I was on the ground. What happened is I had pulled the ripcord at just the right time to stop my momentum but not get started to hit very hard. Further proof of that, when I looked up, the fuselage that I had just left is right there in front of me, 30 yards away. We both came down just like a rock. Well, your, all of your uh, briefings that you've gone through getting prepared for this mission is that get away as soon as you can. Well, I didn't pay any attention to that. I wanted to know what happened to my waist gunner because he had saved my life. And I crawled and walked over to that waste gun door, and he was laying in the back towards the, the rear, <coughs> rear tail wheel. His parachute was open back through the plane. So I don't know yet whether one of them shells coming up from the straping that got him in the back, or whether they... Uh, whether he pulled the chute too quick and it pulled it back into the plane, or maybe just the plane hitting the ground opened his chute. But anyway, he was uh, dead, and uh, I found out from the Germans later that most of the bones in his body was uh, broken. Proven again, I shouldn't stay with that airplane. Well, while I'm investigating this, I didn't notice that there was five Germans coming down the hill towards me, and they got down there. They were uh, soldiers that were guarding a coal mine and making sure that the Belgians did their work each day. And so they were very close by to me and picked me up and said, for you, the war is over. <laughs> 